What's up guys, this is Tyler and I am going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use the Bombernauts map editor, which I didn't document very well, so this video is it. Um, so here's the, uh, the map editor. Now there's a bunch of controls to use to, uh, to navigate around the map editor. You can use Q and E on the keyboard to rotate the camera. You can use WASD to move the camera around. You can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And you can hold shift and use the mouse wheel to rotate the view. And, you know, you can rotate it upside down, but it gets a little bit confusing when it's upside down. Kind of useful if you want to make sure that the bottom of your level looks correct. Um, to uh, place blocks, you use the left mouse button, and you can select your area like this. Um, you can use the mouse wheel to change the size of the selection you are placing and uh, you can use while placing blocks you can hold control if you want your mouse wheel to do zoom or rotate that is shift and mouse wheel to rotate and just mouse wheel to zoom so you can uh, easily like change your viewing angle while working on it. Uh, you can use right mouse button much like the uh, shift, much, much like the left mouse button to erase a section of blocks. And you can use mouse wheel to change the selection up and down. Uh, you can press Z to undo and that's about it for all the basic controls. <clears throat> now there are symmetry modes are fairly important. Um, the symmetry mode just makes it so every time you place a block on one side of the map, it places another block on the other side of the map, depending on the symmetry mode you choose. Two reflectional makes a map that is reflected across this axis right here. Four reflectional makes one that is reflected across both the horizontal and the vertical axis. Two rotational makes one that's reflected across the diagonal. Four rotational makes one that's reflected across both diagonals. And eight way is four rotational and four reflectional combined. And you get basically this little triangular section right here is the part that is repeated across the map. Uh, you can resize the map with this slider, so you can make a you can make a larger map. Um, but I'm just going to keep it at 32 by 32 for now, which is the default size. Oh, you can make the height higher 17 to, to 17, but you can't actually place blocks at the 17th level. It's only there for spawn blocks if you want people to spawn on top of the highest level of the map. So we don't need that. I'm not going to make a super tall map right now. Uh, the block modes are normal blocks, which are just, you know, your regular, your regular explosive, destructible, bomber knots level blocks. Uh, indestructible blocks are the metal blocks and they can be um, not destroyed by regular bombs but they can be destroyed by mega bombs so they're not completely indestructible ice blocks you have no friction when you're on top of an ice block neither do bombs so you'll just slide around and to change your direction you'll have to jump they don't really have anything special for like vertical ice blocks since you didn't have friction on the side of a block anyway. Um, black ice blocks are a combination of indestructible and ice blocks. Bouncy blocks are spring blocks uh, that you can uh, continually jump on to get higher and higher. Regen blocks are blocks that when they destroy, when they get destroyed, they will regenerate after a few seconds. Uh, the time that it takes to regenerate depends on how long the match goes on, 
and a regen block will only regenerate next to an existing block. So if you have um, like a floating regen block, <clears throat> like that, if you destroy this regen block, it will never grow back because it doesn't have a block to grow off of. Regen empty blocks are just the same thing as regen blocks, except they start off destroyed. So these blocks will all grow in during the course of the level. Same rules as a regen block. Sticky mud is a block that slows your movement and jump height when you're on top of it, but you can climb up the side of it too by repeatedly jumping into it. Wood blocks are wooden blocks that when they get destroyed, they catch on fire. They have the same durability as indestructible blocks, so a regular bomb can't destroy them, but a mega bomb can. When a regular bomb explodes on top of it, though, they catch on fire. The fire spreads out over time across the wood blocks, and after they've been on fire for a certain amount of time, they turn into char blocks, which... Uh, when you step on a char block, it breaks after a half a second or so. If you step on a fire block, then you will catch on fire, and when you are caught on fire, you will ignite any wooden blocks you run over. Uh, there is a cycle there where if you're on fire and you catch the wood block on fire, that wood block is now a fire block, and it catches you back on fire. So basically, as long as you're on a wood block and on fire you're going to stay on fire. So levels with wood should, you know, have some sort of, like, platform area where you can, like, get on if you don't want to be on fire. Or not. You can also just make, like, race car levels where everyone's always running really fast on fire and stuff. Uh, and spawn blocks are the spawn location for your robot. Now, the way the, way the spawn blocks work right now is that Uh, I forgot, uh, in the editor, if you have spawn block mode on, then you can only remove spawn blocks and only place spawn blocks. All the regular blocks will not get touched when you're editing stuff. Just makes it a little bit easier to, like, you know, if you have, like, a complicated structure and stuff like that, just makes it a little bit easier to, like, you know, oh, I want spawn blocks here and not want to destroy the structure, or, oh, I don't want spawn blocks there, so I just get rid of them. But, yeah. So it just the spawn blocks, the way a spawn block works is that the game has a list of all the spawn blocks, and when it spawns you, it basically randomly chooses a spawn block, checks to make sure there's a block underneath the spawn block. If there is, it snaps you downwards towards that block. Uh, if there isn't a space beneath the spawn block, like if there's just lava or whatever, uh, then it will choose a new spawn block. So... there is a problem where if you don't have enough spawn blocks, like if your level is just that for spawns, and somebody destroys the block underneath it, the game is basically just going to randomly choose a spot for you to spawn on the rest of the map, and it's not going to guarantee that it's not over lava. So, it's somewhat important when you have spawns in your map that you have, like, a big section for spawning, that it's unlikely that you'll destroy it completely. But you can test that out while playing your map. So there are some guidelines that I that I try to uh, conform to in making a map. And uh, oh, but I, I should go over grid subdivisions. So grid subdivisions are, it just puts a little white marker, which grows, see it's up there now. It grows, depending on the height of the map, but it's just a little white marker every, like, if it's set, if it's set to 2, then it subdivides the level into 2 by 2 squares. If it's set to 4, it subdivides it into 4 by 4. They show up white if it's an even subdivision, meaning every single square right here is the same size. And they show up red if it's not. So this is a 32 by 32 level, so there's no way to subdivide it into 5. So it does a sort of even spot. It'll be easier to see on like a higher level, yeah. 
it does a sort of easier or a sort of even subdivision but you'll see like this one is six by six and then this one is seven by six so it's just there they're just there as guides I usually keep it at like a kind of like this just to help out with the visualizing distances in the editor anyway a couple of guidelines for making levels is that you kinda want like a big area for battles like if your map is like this really if your map is just like a like a really complicated set of like corridors and stuff it's not as like interesting because anywhere on this on a map with like this design you're unsafe everywhere there's like no safe spots like somebody hits you with a bomb on a map like this you're dead and that kind of goes against what bomber knots is where it's supposed to be like in the beginning it's supposed to be somewhat chaotic and then you like establish your territory like you're uh yeah, you can say that your territory is right here, so you like destroy out some of the blocks around it so people have a hard time getting to you, but then your territory is smaller, so there's like this gameplay loop going on with how you destroy the level. And if your map is just a bunch of like really thin platforms, it it's not as interesting to me as if you have like a like a big flat area for a battlefield where people can actually throw bombs at each other and dodge and set up little like camps and find cover and yeah these are just guidelines by the way like you don't have to make levels according to my rules these are just sort of like you know this is what I use when I'm making levels mostly um, symmetry is also good so eight-way symmetry is probably like the most basic one for making an even map because everything ends up being fairly symmetric and you can do pretty interesting patterns with it, like all snowflakey and stuff. Um, another thing to take into consideration is that a level's character is sort of like how it gets destroyed and not how it looks in the beginning. So this level right here is, you know, it's a fairly basic plus sign shape. And... That's actually pretty good because, you know, people are going to blow holes in the level and it's going to get more complicated over time as the as the map goes on. But what's not very good is, like, if you start, like, decorating the map up with a bunch of, like, little structures. Like, oh, I want to put, like, a little tree, like, a little Minecraft tree right here. And then you, like, you know, like... This doesn't have any gameplay significance to Bomber Knots. It's just sort of there as like a decoration. And I do do some stuff like that in my levels, but not like really tiny, tiny little details just because they get destroyed really easily. So it's tough to appreciate them. Another thing is your robot can walk over one thin gaps um, if you're walking over it. But like, so this gap right here you could walk over just fine but if you put like a wall there you'd hit the wall and then fall in the gap because you can fit through one gap you just have to like be aligned perfectly so it's generally like if you want a gap for people to fall into it's generally a good idea to make it too wide just because then they'll actually fall in it if they walk over it Um, the other thing is indestructible tiles like this. Uh, there is a uh, an arrangement of indestructible tiles that makes the game like it gives like a stalemate scenario, which is this like setup right here. If somebody is standing on this block right here, uh, and it kind of has to be like so that you can't get them from underneath either. But if somebody is standing in the corner right here. It's like a stalemate scenario almost, depending on how much, how high the blocks are around. Because like, if they're just standing there, uh, you have to hit them from behind to push them out, but then they can walk right back there. So this like, it's like a 
kind of like a degenerate arrangement of indestructible blocks. So in a lot of levels where I would have corners like this, I just replace these blocks with normal blocks and the, uh, the problem area goes away. But you can test that to see if it matters for your level or not. So, yeah. Let's uh, go back to 8-way symmetry mode and just make like a simple little interesting kind of design. Maybe like a raised platform in the middle. And then maybe some bouncy blocks around the edge of it so that you can like get to the top of the raised platform. There's a, this is um, another thing I should point out is that having like a big thick platform like that it's not fun because it just takes forever to actually like drill holes down into the level and it the line of sight issue gets like amplified a ton when you have like a big section of blocks and there's like people are carving out caves with bombs so it's generally not a good idea to have like a giant section. It's kind of like the same reason why a lot of my levels I avoid having like walls like that because that just blocks your vision and that's a bit annoying. So here's a level where you know you can jump to the center platform and then maybe maybe people spawn on these prongs and then you can save the level. I don't know why it's not saving um, in the right spot. It's probably, oh, it's, um, by default, it should save in the games folder, but because I use the level editor to actually, like, make levels for the games, I had it set somewhere else. But anyway, the custom maps folder, uh, you can save it inside the autumn, neutral, spring, summer, or winter folders, um, Neutral levels will just show up everywhere, like every season in-game the neutral levels will show up, but you just save your maps here. So this is like a crisscross, so I'll just call it crisscross. And the level is saved. Now you can also test the level, test, and then it loads you into your level. So now just, uh, you know, you can uh, jump up to the middle. And then you can like place bombs. Yeah, you can just make sure that you can uh, destroy your level and that everything works okay. And this is actually not a bad level. Like it's a little interesting way of getting up to the middle part. And some prongs right here which are pretty dangerous spots to be in because you know if you get hit by a bomb on one of these prongs you're probably going into the lava. So, you know, it's pretty interesting. Oh, and then um, if you want to edit your level again, you can hit tilde on the keyboard and it brings you back to the editor. Where it, so you can like tweak your level. So you'd be like, oh, maybe it's, maybe you want the middle part of the level even taller than that. And then you, you can be like, uh, maybe it's not good that people are uh, falling in the lava down here. So you add like a little buffer area to give them a second chance if they fall down there and you know you know if you land on this platform right here you're probably still gonna die pretty soon but you know you have a chance to like bomb jump up or like throw a bomb up and carve out a little platform and get back to the top lots of things you can do and uh that's basically it for the bomber not level editor it's simple easy can make some pretty you can make levels pretty quickly uh, and then if you want to actually play your levels when you create a game you can set your game mode to custom and default maps which makes a 50 a 50 50 chance of choosing from your custom maps folder versus choosing the game's default maps folder or just a custom maps folder which is a hundred percent chance of choosing from your custom apps so then you can host your game and now everyone's playing on the level we just made. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching.